so yeah, let's start with this uh, link up with the cheetahs then. Um, just uh, your you general... don't know what to talk about the game, no? Oh, yeah, I'll come, come around to that. Joust... But... I thought you were jousting. Sorry, I'm only thinking. No, the cheetahs, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, well, this, I mean, it's obviously come to fruition now. Um, with people actually being in here. Um, but the we tried to get it sort of up and running to basically give us World Cup cover, really. That was the intent, um, but it's taken a longer uh, than we'd, well, for lots of different reasons. I won't go into the detail, but ultimately it, it's sort of four or five weeks later than when we would have liked it because uh, that would have taken a little bit of pressure off. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're just trying to be... You know, we've investigated with our obviously with our ownership and the relationships that they have, um, opportunities to try and keep strength squad depth good, um, get better preparation with people in the right positions and things like that. So, um, yeah, we um, it's it's hopefully beneficial on on many counts. You know, it allows us the opportunity to, for example, we've got a few. Um, a few plans for some of the emerging youngsters, you know how good we are or, or deliberate we are around the young players, them going to out to, to them and um, play some, some curry cut rugby or some different sort of rugby in different environments away from home and learn about life outside of, you know, outside of Wales. So hopefully it's a, it's a, it's a beneficial thing for, for everyone concerned. Yeah. So you've got the, um, Three players uh, involved already. Are they over? Are they in training and so forth? Yeah, they're all in in relation to. Um, uh, they've been here this week. Um, obviously, you know we've gone from we've almost doubled our numbers with the international boys coming back in and and those boys. So from that point of view, it's it's, it's been nice having some uh, some more bodies around and some keen bodies at that. So yeah, it's uh, they've been in in and training this week. Is that it now for for this season? Is your squad settled, or you are there more potentially more players to to strengthen going forward? Um, not necessarily. I think we still we've deliberately sort of kept a little bit back if we could uh, see how we go. You know, deal with the injuries a little bit. Um, so we've got the flexibility to do a little bit, um, which has been deliberate. You know, injury allowing so and also um we we have a little bit of flexibility around that arrangement as well so it doesn't necessarily have to be you know the same players all the time so from that point of view they're obviously short or effectively short-term loans that are going to go back and uh, it allows us a pool of players to jump into and and hopefully uh, recruit if need be so there, there comes obviously challenge with that but um it means you're trying to be as cost effective as possible you know you mentioned the international boys back. Um, how soon before we see them involved? Yeah, you'll see some of them this week. Um, not all of them, but you'll see some of them this week. So, you know, we've taken on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, as everyone knows, because of the World Cup, we've got a lot of games that come in a, in consecutive weeks, 13. Um, so it's about managing that across the piece. Um, you know, we've given some a little bit of extra time. We've given some have just come back because they've been injured and come back broken um, and needed more time. We've had some that are ready to go. So, yeah, you'll see some of them this week. Many changes then for, for Glasgow? Owen Williams, what's, um, what's the latest with him? Yeah, Owen's, no, Owen won't go. He's, um, he's uh, he had a sort of a little tug, nothing major, too much on a hamstring. Um, he's got history in that area. So we were very proactive around that. Um, so it'll be a week or two, I think, um, but nothing too much to, to, you know, we can't afford to risk these situations with the squad sizes that we've got. So he 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 will miss out this week. Um, we'll reward people that went well last week as well. I think it's important culturally not to just, you know, make wholesale changes and, you know, we can blend that. We've got Welsh derbies coming around the corner. We've got Europe coming around the corner. So we need to make sure we manage our resources and and the motivation of the group uh, whilst trying to maintain some decent momentum. Yeah, motivation pretty high after what's been a decent start to the season. Um, how happy are you with the start? Yeah, of course, motivation's good. Yeah, and look, we've um, 
you know, we've only, we, we very rarely suffer from lack of motivation, you know, um, I think, and you'd expect them to say that. I think the thing that derails most of the emotives, especially within this group, is normally stuff that comes outside of this group. You know, there was obviously the the whole fiasco last year around various stuff. Um, that was quite derailing. We had a lot of squad change as well. So, no, they're, they're, uh, our boys are pretty settled. They're in, enjoying themselves, you know, coming to work with a smile on their face and, you know, we're trying to have a bit of fun as well. So, yeah, morale's good. Nothing beats winning to help you do that, for sure. Thanks, Toby. Thank you. Sorry, Toby, um, who's your best number seven at the club at the moment? Number seven? Yeah. Depends on what... Depends on what well, I just, asked, I just asked that question because of the way that Harry Deves played last week, yeah. Yeah, he was great, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, the guy who played on Saturday for the Barbars wasn't too bad either. No, it was a bit of a pain in the neck, really, wasn't it? Too bad. Um, and, yeah, look, again, against, um, you know, against teams that want to, for example, play a lot um, and keep ball in hand, sometimes it's a good idea to have two of them, you know? And, you know, you look at Cardiff, for example, they off, they play with three sevens sometimes, you know? Yeah. So, from that it's important about having um, a bit of horses for courses. You still need balance in your back row from carrying, from line out presence. But if you've got good people that are good on the ground, you know, and and good at um, defensively negating attacks, as and those two boys that you spoke about are very very good at that for sure. It's a great uh, headache or opportunity depending on on who you pick and where you pick them. But from your point of view, it must be fantastic to see someone like Harry and James Fender and some of those other lads step up and really show how much they've grown. Yeah, great. I mean, that's, I mean, you talk, I make no secret about, you know, that I've spoken from the start about how important getting young players through is, um, you know, and we're talking, we talk about Morgan Morris like he's been around forever, you know, yeah. for example. And, you know, there's a lot of those Reese Davises, Jack Morgans, Ruben, Dowie Lakes, etc. But the next lot we've got to try and find too, you know. So James Fender, I think, is a great story. You know, we get a couple of injuries in there. He, you know, he's we've definitely acknowledged how much he had to do in that week to prepare, and it was and sometimes when it's rushed on you. But the reason that he could do that was because he was out for a year's loan at Pirates last year. We were deliberate about what exposure he got. He's actually grabbed the opportunity of both hands and he's shown that he can live in that. I mean, that the defensive set, not just his functional role, you know, the strip on the on the goal line, you know, never played 80 minutes at this level before. Yeah. You know, that's that's really exciting for us because ultimately when you grow your own, they're emotionally connected to the team from the get-go. So that's really important for us from a cultural point of view as well. So I don't know if Gats has been in touch, but he definitely needs an outside half and he definitely needs a fullback. Who have you got in the, uh, in the wings? Um, so obviously, from a, from a fly-off point of view, obviously you've seen Jack Walsh, who's, who's improved immeasurably in the time that he's been here. He's got, he's good. He's not going to... I think he's a time server, so he's probably yeah. not going to be on the radar for a little bit. Um there, you've got Dan Edwards, who we've got from a under twenties point of view. Everyone knows about him. He played pre-season. He's been out of Swansea. He'll be back involved this week because of obviously Owen's situation. Um, you know, you heard Peely talk about Costello and and Johan um, Lloyd about um, about time in the saddle in that position are really important. So, yeah, you you've got to go. You know, we've got Luke Davis, for example, at nine. Is, is you know he's not played at this level before. He's in, he's exciting. Um, Max Nagy again. He's been in, in the country for quite a while as, as a student. So you know he he's a person that potentially will qualify at some point. So we might not be ready quite, you know, immediately, but uh, we're hopeful that over time we'll be able to contribute more in that position for sure. So so the quest for number ten is. Uh vital really given who's you know the level of experience it's got but just because of his size people look at Dan Edwards and say he's not going to make it but he's got yeah. so many good qualities yeah I mean he's a very good attacker everyone you saw how he managed the game well for the 20s um 
every ten every ten oh, you've has ever you know played the game is always going to get questions over defence. Everyone, because you know they're not in there, to, they're not in the game to defend. However, they act provide a functional role to a certain level in order for you not to be, you know, the stick in the mud, as it were. So, from that point of view, it's important that every player works on both sides of the game. And yeah, as I said, time in the saddle, physical development, all of those bits where you position, and you can coach around these things a little bit more now. You know, things are a little bit more. You know, for example, my time well, Quinns and us last year, we moved 10 around quite a lot so that people couldn't come up with plans to get to Steve Myler and look after his creaking bones and and not expose people. But, you know, you can be creative around it. But ultimately, you still have to do the job you're asked to do in the moment. And ultimately, when you're called to defend, you have to defend. So looking at this weekend, I mean, uh, two words on the fence, uh, you know, big win over the South Africa team, which is great. But Glasgow one of the standard there, is aren't they? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, they uh, everyone knows what Franco's, you know, doing there and in, in conjunction with obviously the Scottish way of playing as well. Um, you know, they're gonna roll into that town very confident, I'm sure. Um and and you know, try and impose a very uh, dynamic, fast style, uh, you know, against us for sure. Um so we're gonna need to produce defensive qualities like that we show on Friday. For sure, because there's going to be times where you're going to get stretched, you know, and being very uncomfortable. So we want to obviously win, you know, show the best of ourselves in in our defensive mindset, force some issues, and then as a result, we can then impose ourselves on the game from an attack point of view. The good thing for us is having a bit more strength in depth in our tight five with returnees from international means that everyone knows that, you know, we, we've gone okay or better than okay from a set piece point of view, um, and having that sort of weapon in your armour is also important because you you know you've got to be respected on a couple of fronts. You know, is Gareth Thomas fit? He's returned to training this week, um, right. first time. But yeah, he is fit. Right. So is he in contention? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in contention. Yeah. But you got you got Nicky coming back presumably, so. Uh... You got Nicky. Nicky played obviously for us a couple of weeks ago, uh, before we went to the Wales Bar Bars game. Uh, Garen Phillips has gone yeah. pretty well as well. Reese Henry's done well in that position. We've got uh, James Kenny on loan from from uh, Exeter. So yeah, we, we're we're doing okay. And touch wood that we keep that competition for places, which pushes everybody on. It also means you're not forced to play people before they're slightly undercooked, which yeah. but obviously. Creates greater injury risk. So, you know, that's the most important thing. Of course, everyone has an air of responsibility, right? But we try and team coach a lot. Yeah. You know, we try and um, we make sure that all of our parts are sort of joined up rather than in silos. But um, we're certainly clear about what we are as a defensive team. There's been good buy-in from the players. You know, Jonesy's definitely set the attitude. And I think you saw a, a lot of that last week, which was good. As he would said, the challenge for us is doing it week in and week out because we still conceded a fair bit the week before and the week before that. Um, and our attack is travelling along nicely. You know, we're scoring tries and bits and pieces, but we we certainly, our intent is to be less leaky for sure. Yeah. So if we have those two outstanding Montpellier games and the Leicester game last season as the, uh, the standard, can you reach and go beyond that this season, do you think? Well... I suppose that was, you know, that's a great example, right, about, I mean, obviously, as you say, I, I was sort of theoretically heading that up at the time. You know, it's the mindset of the players, really, yeah. That, yeah. that determines that, you know, and the young players that you saw on show, you know, last week, and, you know, I've had a lot bit of stick for my Legoland quote, um, you know, about, so from that, from that point of view, it just shows you how far a mindset will get you irrespective of age and experience. And often those things manifest themselves without the ball, you know, and the unseen stuff. So from, from that point of view, our challenge is maintaining an emotional energy, um, you know, and and a want to do stuff that's uncomfortable. And that that's often about the tightness of the group, the makeup of the group, and it's the culture that underpins it all. So, you know, we'll continue to to work on those sort of things. Yeah. Well, it's certainly, yeah, it was certainly very much in evidence that if you've got a strong front five and a bench that can come on and you've got a defensive mindset like that, 
you've really got two of the biggest building blocks in the uh, in the game. Yeah, that's the game, right? That is the game. Yeah, super. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, hi, Toby. Is, is this one of those sort of benchmark games that if you you do beat Glasgow, who are usually up towards the top at at home, then we get quite a good sort of view of where you're you're going to be. A bit like last Friday was a was a benchmark game, and obviously you passed that test. Yeah, I, th I think look, benchmark games, levels of performance, standards, mindsets, all those things that culturally that you're really interested in that basically breeds consistency and trust, right? So, from those point of view, I think we're always under we're always under self imposed scrutiny, if you like, um, because that's what we want to be as a team. And you're not going to progress anywhere if you let, if you can't perform consistent performances. We just talked about it from defence. The challenge for us is backing up this week, you know, and going again. Whereas our attack has been quite consistent, which is good, and that's deliberate because that's what we started out with. So, from that point of view, is it a benchmark game? It'll be. It, it is in relation to see where we are, but we know that, as you say, Glasgow are a very top, you know, a very tough nut to crack. Uh, they they've gone well. I don't want to put pressure on this young group, this new group, because it's finding, you know, finding out what it is and what it's capable for. And actually, I'm more interested in creating the energy and the interest to want to do it for for each other and for the fans and for you know the group, rather than go right. Where are we against Glasgow? Because if you do that regularly and continuously, you're going to find out how good you are. We want basically our talent to decide. You know, we can't be better than what the sum of the parts can be. We can try and grow that. But what we can be is supply the effort and energy that in order to be that every single time. And that's the that's the benchmarking that we'll certainly pride ourselves on. Um, I appreciate you guys look at the outcomes. But if we get that performance elements right, then it'll be come down to who's best on the day. And you talked a bit earlier about the Cheetahs tie-in. Isn't Glasgow have got Ali Price going to Edinburgh for a season, which obviously suits Scotland probably more than it suits Glasgow. Can you see a point where the Welsh regions would work together in a in a similar way instead of maybe looking at South Africa as a partnership? I think we're definitely having greater dialogue around, you know, uh, definitely dialogue about how we can work together in order to maintain um, or, you know, either give people opportunity in game time. But also, it depends on the nature of what you've got. You know, often, you know, if we can grow our own, great. But we still need to maintain competitiveness. So it's, you know, you reply, you can you can pl um, replace one high high potential youngster with another for sure. But if you're trying to replace, you know, an international player with a, an academy kid who's eighteen, there's a risk reward element to that. A, are you actually hindering that? that person's development by exposing them too quickly. Um, and there's a, and, or actually are you giving them opportunity to see where they are? So, yeah, I think there's, there's definitely a want from a regional point of view and that's manifest itself. Like, so for example, we're in much closer dialogue with each other, I think for sure, because we have an empathy about the situation that we find ourselves in, you know, through mutual discomfort and, and pain and resources, we find ourselves where we are, but I think that's a good thing. Um, however, we're still competitive with each other. So I think that there's a there's definitely a want on that side, a necessity on that side. And I think those barriers have been broken down. You know, I wouldn't say fully because that would be ridiculous, but at least there's an understanding and empathy towards it for sure.